Hello, everyone. We're shaking up the Friday message a bit by devoting this edition to a topic very much in the news, long COVID. In just a moment, we'll be joined by one of our very own experts to tell us more. Long COVID is marked by physical and mental health symptoms that persist, recur, or appear four more weeks after the initial SARS-CoV-2 infection. The list of symptoms is quite long, which makes it challenging to study. There's a lot we still don't know about long COVID, but there's a number of initiatives sponsored by CDC, DOD, and NIH. And in fact, the NIH named DCRI the Clinical Trials Data Coordinating Center for large-scale national research studies aimed at understanding and improving the treatment of long COVID. RTI International has been named the Administrative Center and will be our partner in this initiative. To help update me on the latest, I've invited Christina Barkowskis, a pulmonologist and critical care specialist and assistant professor of medicine. She's one of the co-PIs in the grant together with Sean O'Brien and Kanisha Zimmerman. So welcome, Christina. Thanks for joining us today. So Christina, let's start with the definition of long COVID. Sure. So long COVID can be defined um, a few different ways. Most people should recover from their acute COVID infection within four weeks. So if you have persistent symptoms or symptoms that pop up more than four weeks after you've been initially infected, that starts to get you thinking about long COVID. For some of these trials, we want patients to have symptoms that are present at least 90 days out from their initial infection and symptoms that have been persistent, so sometimes for weeks or months more. And what kind of symptoms are we talking about? Yeah, so this is really tricky because the symptoms are all over the map. People can have symptoms like fatigue, brain fog, anxiety, depression, exercise intolerance, autonomic dysfunction, so dizziness. Um, really, it's the, the gamut of symptoms. And that makes it really hard to diagnose because some of these symptoms are very vague and not very specific. It also makes it hard to study. If you, you just think of the, the prevalence, how common is it? You know, those numbers are also all over the map. Um, some studies will suggest that one in eight patients will develop uh, long COVID. Sometimes the numbers are estimated to be lower. Sometimes the prevalence is estimated to be higher. Again, we really don't know because it's so hard to study because the symptom clusters are um, all over the map. So what do we know so far about prevention in terms of the vaccine or Paxlovid? Yep, good question. Certainly we think that avoiding infection is uh, obviously one trick to avoiding long COVID. And one good way to do that is to be vaccinated. Um, the epidemiologic data are not crystal clear out there, but it does seem like you have lower risk of developing long COVID if you have been vaccinated. So we encourage people to get vaccinated if they haven't, to get their booster if they haven't, um, to think about getting the new booster to cover the uh, variants that are circulating right now. Um, regarding Paxlovid, um, you know, jury's still out on whether that will prevent long COVID symptoms, but it seems like that might be beneficial. If we can mop up the virus faster, earlier, maybe that leads to better long-term outcomes. And are there any risk factors that might correlate more with the possibility of developing long COVID? So that's another really good question. You know, patients who are in the hospital who have very severe courses are obviously at risk of having long-term symptoms. But some of that is what you would normally expect if someone is in the hospital, let's say with ARDS, from another cause, not just COVID, right? These patients are deconditioned, they may have lung injury, lung scarring from the extent of their lung injury. So those folks are at risk of having long-term symptoms. But even folks who have pretty mild disease, they you know, remain as outpatients, they can go on to have long COVID as well. So there's no real rhyme or reason um, you know, correlation between the severity of your initial illness and your risk of developing long COVID. I've certainly heard many of my colleagues complain of the brain fog, mm -hmm. um, and that seems to be what bothers them the most. Yep. So if you start thinking about the types of questions uh, these studies are going to address, I imagine it's going to run from everything from understanding the mechanism to finding effective treatments. I've been intrigued lately by a study that showed that long COVID patients have more persistent viral proteins mm -hmm. than non-long COVID patients. But what kinds of questions do you imagine they're going to start addressing? Yeah, so one of the most important hypotheses we're going to test is this hypothesis that long COVID is associated with viral persistence. Um, and there are data that are accumulating in the literature to suggest that patients with long COVID do have evidence of virus in their bodies months after infection. Um, 
There are a number of different assays out there used to assess this, and we are working with um, some collaborators across the, the board to figure out the best way to measure viral persistence. We don't know if it can be measured in plasma, serum, if the virus hides in specific organs, but we're trying to sort that out. And we're going to try to determine whether treatment with an antiviral months after infection can help to alleviate some of these symptoms of long COVID with the hypothesis that their symptoms may be driven by viral persistence. Certainly as a virologist, I am intrigued by that hypothesis, but I think there's a lot we need to know. The other side of the equation is certainly an inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. um, what do we know about that? Yep, we know that patients with acute COVID infection have immune dysregulation. And there have been a lot of trials done to test immune modulator drugs to determine if we can tweak the immune system response and, and get things back in check so that tissues aren't damaged by a dysregulated response. And there are some hypotheses that there's continued immune dysregulation, again, months after viral infection. And whether this is coupled to viral persistence or whether it's some sort of reprogramming to the immune system, we don't know. But likely down the road, we may address this by um, testing patients with long COVID to see how immune modulation later on may affect their and clinical status. I imagine status. that might show us a biomarker panel that might be part of the diagnosis of long COVID. Any mm -hmm. thoughts there? Uh, right now, it would be lovely if we had a biomarker so we could better diagnose these patients because, again, we're going predominantly by symptoms. Um, I think it's very important to try to understand the mechanism behind all of this so we can risk stratify patients identify patients who may respond to one treatment more than another. Um, and that's absolutely work that needs to be done. We are far from that right now. Um, with this Recover initiative, the clinical trials that are going to begin to roll out are going to start off by addressing this viral persistence hypothesis. And we're also going to have specific trials testing interventions um, in patients with specific symptom clusters. So patients with exercise intolerance, patients with sleep disorders, um, patients with dysautonomia, um, and hopefully by studying patients with these specific symptoms, we'll be able to start to tease out uh, nuances uh, in their phenotype and then better be able to identify patients who may respond to treatments down the road. Well, certainly a lot we have to learn, but it is so exciting that we are part of the studies, and thank you to you and your colleagues for really leading that initiative in DCRI. So with that, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to encourage everybody to get the bivalent vaccine. Yep, I agree. Get the vaccine, try to prevent initial infection, and that should hopefully protect you from some of these long COVID symptoms. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Christina, and I hope you'll come back soon to keep us posted on the outcomes of the studies. Yep, I'd love to come back and let you know what we learn in the future. Great. If you want to learn more about long COVID, we have several detailed media briefings with Duke experts available. You can find them on YouTube and stay tuned to the news coming out of DCRI. In the meantime, get your COVID booster, get your flu shot, and we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.